Hare Krishna, devotees, Prabhuji and Vataji, Tanvat Pranam, and welcome to today's class. Uh, we, the, we are in Bhakti Yoga, and this is the last chapter of Bhakti Yoga, that is uh, chapter number 12 that we are supposed to take today. So before we start this today's uh, chapter, let us pray to Sri Sri Radha Gobindiji and pay our obeisances to Sri Sri Radha Gobind and Srimati Radha Rani. So, Om Ajnana Timirandha Sekyananjan Shalakya Chakshurun Minitamena Tasmai Shri Gurvehe Nama Om Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Peshtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedant Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharani Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschat Desh Tarani Jayo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Kadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindhan, E Krishna Karna Sindhu, Deen Bandhu Jagatpati, Bhopesh Bhopika Kanta, Shri Radha Kanta Namostate, Tapt Kanchan Gaurangi, Shri Radhe Vrindhavaneshwari, Vrashabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hare Pye, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Rama Hare Hare So Hare Krishna devotees and then what pram to all Prabhu ji and Mata ji in the class we will start with bhakti yoga so let us understand what is basically bhakti or devotional service. What do we understand by bhakti? Any idea or any definition you can imagine of what it is? Mataji, Prabhuji, what is bhakti? Okay, so bhakti is basically nothing but purification of senses. Internal senses, external senses. And when we are purified, the heart is pure, we, then we realize that what is our real identity. At the moment, we are full of ego and we are identifying ourselves with the body or my designation by my position in social circle or maybe position in office. So that is not real identity. Our real identity that we are Krishna's part and parcel, we are soul, we are super soul, we are this, not this material body. So when we purify our senses out of this ego or this false conception, then it is called pure bhakti. The realization of self is pure bhakti. So we have uh, passed through chapter number 11. This is a brief summary. Arjuna initially requests Krishna to show his uniform, universal uniform, universal form, sorry. And uh, why universal form? Because he was already convinced his illusion had gone that Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead, not ordinary friend or uh, ordinary person. Yet he wanted to see this universal form and the four reasons which I gave for just to substantiate the Krishna's statement that he is supreme personality of Godhead and he pervades the entire universe. Secondly, to ward off the imposters who might claim that I am Supreme Personality of God and I am God or I am Bhagavan feature of God. And thirdly, for the belief of, of the trust of the normal common person who can understand that Krishna is super, uh, super uh, supreme powers and supreme uh, presence all over the universe and planets. So these are some of the reasons why Krishna has to reveal his. And Arjuna he was very submissive in the beginning. He said that if you wish, if you think, he said, if you think that I am able to behold that universal form, then please show me. So this is how a devotee speaks to his spiritual master. Then Krishna, Lord Krishna describes his uniform, universal form that, but he, before that, he gives him divine vision so that he can visualize. And I mentioned there were five, six persons who could see this universal form. Uh, and the battlefield and Arjuna's vision of the, what Arjuna saw, he describes in 9 to 14. Then experience, what he experienced after the feeling of awe, wonder, 
and ultimately surrender and uh, ultimately uh, bhakti. So from rasa, mellows or relationship changed right from the sakya to uh, wonder or bibas, and then after that again he surrenders. That is dasam. How so? This is how he experience is mentioned by uh, Arjuna. Then Krishna's reply that Kalu was then he asked uh, Arjuna asked what you are and what what is your mission. So then Krishna replies that I am uh, Kalu Asmi. I am the Kal or the time. And the, you know, the time will, is all devouring. It kills everything or destroys everything. So everything changes except Krishna's transcendental body. Everything is subject to change, including the uh, Brahma has got a certain span of life. So everything is subject to, to change except Krishna who is uh, transcendental, who is Bhagavan feature. So then after understanding that, and his mission was to destroy uh, the, the evil forces and re-establish the dharma. So then Arjuna prayers, then he feels guilty of himself that, oh, Arjuna, I have called you by names. I have insulted you in front of others. I have slept uh, on the same court with you. And even sometimes I have eaten in your same plate. So I did not realize. I just considered you as my friend. So then Krishna says that, who can see you are pure devotee, you are a pure Vaishnava. That is why I have shown you this, because you are having pure Bhakti with me. So these are, I will not go into further uh, uh, recapitulation of previous chapters. Uh, universal form was the name of last chapter. So this is chapter 12, number 12, Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti over impersonalism. We know that Mayavadi are there who do not believe in personal form of Krishna, that Krishna has a body, that Krishna has a form. They believe in Brahman effulgence. They believe that effulgence is the ultimate uh, objective of their worship and meditation. So he, Arjuna asks first question, that is, which is better, personal bhakti, devotional service, or impersonalism, or mayavadi, or worship of Brahman feature of Bhagavan? Progressive stages of bhakti, how does bhakti develop and what are the qualifications that are dear to Krishna so far as devotee is concerned. So he tells about 26 qualities beginning from chapter number, uh, verse number 13 to 19 and in the, in the 20 again there is a different issue. So these are, this is a broad summary. Now, uh, yes, Mataji, would you like to read or verses? Yes, Mataji. Arjuna Vacha Evam Satati Yukaye Bhaktaspam Paryupasate Yesha Piaksharam of Jeskam Tishamke Yoga Vitamaham. So Arjuna inquired the first. This is for the Arjuna is a very wise Vaishnava, very devoted devotee of Lord Krishna. He is asking many questions, many questions, and Krishna is clearing doubt. He is clearing not for Arjuna, for all of us, in fact. Arjuna inquired, which is considered to be more perfect? Those who are properly engaged in your devotional service, that is pure bhakti, or those who worship the impersonal Brahma, the unmanifested. So you can see that in the, this is the Brahman effulgence, represents the Brahman effulgence, and this is personal form of God, Krishna. So what do you think, which is better form to worship? Please unmute and tell which you think is a better form for our uh, devotional service? This form or this one? The personal form, devotional, devotional service. Why we can't have any relationship with this form? So this is, a, let us imagine this is a lamp. The light is emitting from the, the light source and uh, there are radiance all around. Uh, what kind of relationship we can we have, have with this kind of effulgence? Can we have any kind of relationship or develop any kind of rasa or melu with this effulgence? No problem. Yes. Thank you, Prabhupada. So we, we can't, you know, when we can't see something, we do not believe it. This is the normal uh, human concept. Now, because of our elders, our spiritual masters, they have seen all those things. They have described. So, Guru, Shadu, and Shastra, we believe on them. So, and we know that earlier chapters we read that there are three forms, three stages of God realization. First is Brahman, 
realization, second is Paramatma, and third is the Bhagavan feature of God. So, Brahman feature, what is this effulgence coming? Where is this effulgence coming from? Mayabadis do not know, want to know it. It is coming from the transcendental body of Lord Krishna only. And second feature, so this is analogy you must have uh, studied under your chapters that there is sun god, there is sun disk, and there are sun rays. So the Mayabadis or impersonalists are confined to worshipping this sun rays only. They do not want to know where from this uh, rays are uh, these rays are coming from. And the second is of God realization is Paramatma feature of Lord Krishna. A Paramatma feature is super soul. This is what yogis and mystic yogis they are or astang yogi are focusing on. They also are falling short of reaching Bhagwan feature of who is reaching Bhagwan feature on the pure devotee. So Arjuna wants to now know because he has seen the uh, universal form. What is universal form? Is it a personal form or is it impersonal form? Impersonal form. It was. It is impersonal form. We can't have, you know, we can't develop relationship. We can't have a, any kind of uh, Shanti Rasa or Dasi Rasa or Sakhi Rasa or Vasali or Madhuri Rasa with that uh, universal form. It is awful. It is fearsome. Everybody was discussing it. So, Krishna is, uh, Arjuna is asking this form. After seeing all these things, he is wants to establish his devotional service or his bhakti in Krishna and he wants to uh, a direct answer from Lord Krishna. So this is personal form is good, uh, the best. Both are good because ultimately what happens that Mayabadi, they are also worshipping feature of God. They are not worshipping Bhagwan feature. They are worshipping one of the features of God. So they are ultimately also worshipping. So this is good. But worshipping the personal form is the best thing because for personal form, we can have a loving relationship with that, that form. We can prepare, cook, food, prasadam for, we can dress up our deity in, in home. We can give a bath. We can have nice dresses. We can have decorate them with jewels and garlands and flowers and do all kind of worship. But with this form, we can't do anything. So now Krishna says, in the, yes, Mataji, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, May Avishya Mano Ye Maam, Nitya Yukta Upasate, Shadhaya Paryupetas, Tena Yukta Tamo Mataha. The Blessed Lord said, He whose mind is fixed on my personal form, always, engaged in worshipping me with great and transcendental faith is considered by me to be the most perfect. So Krishna has given answer that the, what is the best form? The personal form. You see, this within this personal form of two arms, that is Sham Sundar form, you can see this beautiful Sham Sundar form. This is a picture from Ram Balram Mandir, Sri Ram Balram Mandir of Vrindavana. So now this within this two hand form, the forehand form was there. And within this forehand form, the universal form was there. So you see, all the both the forms, the forearm form or the universal form, they have come out from the two-arm form. So why not worship the original form? So Krishna replies, that is that the personal form is the best, most perfect. It is the most perfect. He uses the word most perfect, you know, not any superlative perfect. We know the perfection is the ultimate stage, but he says it is the most perfect. That means he is not denying, he is not contradicting that Mayavadis are wrong. But of course, personal relationship and Arjuna, you know, always had a personal relationship with Krishna since his childhood. So he, he is now convinced that personal form is worth worshipping. In verse number three and four, Krishna says, but those who fully worship the unmanifested, that which lies beyond the perception of senses, the all-pervading, inconceivable, fixed and immovable, immovable, the impersonal conception of the absolute truth by controlling the various senses and being equally disposed to everyone, such persons engaged in the welfare of all at last achieve me. So Krishna has assured that Mayavadis or Brahmavadis, they are also, also worshipping me, but indirectly. They also ultimately reach, but the, their path is very, very different. Why? The form is not visible. It is unmanifested. You can't, you don't see it. 
that which lies beyond the perception of senses. Krishna is adhoksha. Adhoksha means that he is beyond the perception of our material senses. We can't perceive him through our material senses. We can perceive him only through pure heart, pure through pure devotional service. And the all-pervading. Now, we have to have a focus point for our worship. But Krishna is all-pervading per, all in the entire planets, universes, living and non-living entities, everywhere Krishna is there. So how can we focus our atten uh, attention on something which is not, has a form in this, but it is all-pervading? Inconceivable. That is, you can't think of it. You can't, when you don't imagine shape, you can't conceive him or you can't understand him. It is fixed and immovable. So this form, how these Brahmavadis or Mayavadis are worshipping, they are controlling their various senses. And previous in the Karma Yoga, we, in the last chapter, we heard about the Ashtang Yoga, Yam Niyam Asan, Pranayam Pratyahar, Dhyan Dharna and Samadhi. That was the six, uh, the eight stages of uh, uh, the, reaching this uh, Ashtang Yoga. So just imagine following the Yam, Niyam, then asan, a definite posture is required. You have to lead this society, go to a secluded place and practice. Then, of course, pranayam, control over the breath, and pratyaha, thereafter, you know, dhyan, dharana, dhyan, and thereafter, samadhi. So the, it is a very long path. And this bhakti yoga is very, very short. Now, there is a, you know, a, a, a 10 story building. Would you like to take escalator to reach the 10th floor or you would like to go step uh, the, the, the staircase? What, what, what is our preference? Yes? Please interact. Unmute and tell me. It also depends on your you are, Your legs are not uh, okay, then you have to take the escalator. No, 10th floor, Mataji, I'm telling you. Yes, 10th floor. Some people are not able to climb up physically, so they have to take the escalator. But if you can climb up physically, uh, climbing up the steps is uh, the most preferred. Okay. So, but Mataji, let us compare now the, what are the merits and demerits. It will take long time. It will take a lot of effort. But in escalator, it takes very short time and the, you reach the destination very fast. So this is like bhakti yoga. Uh, in bhakti yoga, through devotional service, pure devotional service, the access is direct to the Krishna. And in case of taking mayavadi approach or the brahmavadi approach, worshipping the impersonal form of, it is a very, very long and tough. In Kali yoga, the, the, the people, you know, in the, this is mentioned in the, uh, Kento 1 of Srimad Bhagavatam, People are quarrelsome. The life is spent is short. They are disturbed. They are, uh, you know, always uh, concentrating uh, their uh, energies on their senses or sense enjoyment. So, given these, these, uh, uh, and they are in fact virtually so much disturbed that they are not composed. So they cannot concentrate, meditate, and do all this kind of ashtanga yoga. So the best thing is to have direct access. So Krishna is saying, but whatever route you take, longer route or shorter route, you will reach me. Then, yes, Mataji? Verse number five. Klesho dhikara stesham avyakta shakta chetasham avyakta hi gatir dukham deha vadhir pavyati pavyati so Krishna says for those whose minds are attached to the unmanifested or impersonal feature of Supreme, advancement is very troublesome. I told you, taking going steps, reaching 10th floor is very troublesome. You are spending a lot of energy, whatever physical level fit of fitness may be. You get tired. You, get, you have to make a lot of effort. You take a lot of time. To make progress in that discipline is always difficult for those who are embodied. Embodied, we are embodied persons. Embodied, that means our soul is encased in the material body. So for us, it is very difficult to take up this path. Now, yes, Pataji, 6, 7. Ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasamat parha anengeva yogi nama. 
मध्यापासते तेषाम अहम समुद्धार्था मृत्यु संसार सागरा भवामी ना चिरात पार्था मय अविष्ठा चेत साम So Krishna says, "For one who worships me, that is worships my personal form, giving up all the activities unto me, that is nishkam karma. That is he doesn't enjoy the fruits or activity, the benefits of his activity, and offers the fruit to Lord Krishna, gives up, and being devoted to me without deviation, ananya bhakti. He is talking about now ananya bhakti, that is unmotivated and uninterrupted." Engaged in devotional service and always meditating upon me, who has fixed his mind upon me, O son of Pratha, for him I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. That means by means of birth, uh, the pure devotional service, a living entity, a, an embodied person, has a chance of getting out of this uh, the cycle of birth and death. And this this world is asashatam dukhaleya. It is a shashvatam. It is it is temporary, transient. It is not real. Brahmavadi says that this world is uh, unreal. It is not. Uh, it is not unreal because Lord Krishna has created how something which has been created by Krishna could be unreal. The world is real, but world is full is temporary and subject to change. And also, it is full of miseries. We are in a say our position is like being in a prison. Like no, just imagine a baby when it is in the womb of a mother, then uh, the boy, the uh, the uh, baby prays to Krishna that please, where have you put me? Take me out, take me out, give, take me out. Similarly, we are also in a prison. We want to get out of this prison, prison of this material world. And where is our real home? Our real home is Goloka Prindavan because we are part and parcel of Lord. Why? Because of our intense. Propensities, intense desires, because of our three modes of material nature, we are by default in present in this material world, which is like a prison. And you know, a person maybe very this this is this a person who is drowning. In fact, he is he might be a very very good good swimmer, but can he save himself uh, on his own effort and come out of this vast ocean? He can't. Because he needs an expert swimmer, and Krishna is the expert swimmer who can salve uh, us out of this ocean of birth and death. So yes, Mataji. May eva mana bhatsa may buddhi niveshaya nivasishya nivasishya may eva atha udhivamana atha udhivamana samshaya. Krishna has given the, the now he is telling progressive stages. Now he is very adjusting. Krishna is very merciful to his devotees. He knows that it is not easy to surrender immediately. You know when we pass uh, when we pass certain examinations to begin with, then only we enter into the medical college. In medical college, then we pass on multiple examinations, then we qualify to be doc a doctor. So similarly. Uh, any officer, anywhere, this is the gradual process of elevation. In Krishna consciousness or Krishna bhakti, this process is also gradual. It is not sudden that today we take up Krishna consciousness and we are pure devotees. No, we are having so many anarthas which have to be done away with. So Krishna says, just fixed, fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that Engage all your intelligence. So mind and intelligence have to be put into Krishna. Thus you will live in me always without a doubt. So the mind and intelligence. Now, you know, these are our enemies. They are also, mind is our biggest enemy. Intelligence is superior to mind. But intelligence has to work under control of soul. Uh, soul. But what is happening? It is the reverse way. The senses are controlling, are guiding our mind and the mind is controlling the intelligence at the moment. So that is why we are suffering here. So Krishna says, if you want to come out of this uh, world of misery, just fix your mind and intelligence into me and thus you will live in me always without a doubt. And this is Ananya Bhakti. You know, Bhakti, Bhakti has got, uh, in the nectar of devotion, Srila Rupa Goswami has described, the bhakti is three types. First bhakti is sadhana bhakti. 
साधना भक्ति हैज अगेन टू टाइप्स ऑफ भक्ति वैदी भक्ति एंड राधानुगा भक्ति वैदी भक्ति मीन्स दैट यू फॉलो द रिलीजियस प्रिंसिपल्स यू फॉलो द स्क्रिप्शन डायरेक्शन एंड यू वर्शिप द लॉर्ड एंड देर आफ्टर यू फॉर गेट अबाउट यूर वर्शिप दिस इज वॉट मोस्ट ऑफ अस आर डूइंग वी वर्शिप ड्यूरिंग मॉर्निंग आवर्स गो टू अवर ऑफिस फॉर गेट अबाउट कृष्णा सो वेर इज नेवर फॉर गेट कृष्णा ऑलवेज रिमेम्बर कृष्णा दैट इज टू बी अवर गोल सो दिस इज वैदी भक्ति वी आर फॉलोइंग स्क्रिप्चर्स doing our uh, worship uh, or upasana in a proper manner but rest of the period we are off the second stage of sadhana bhakti is raganuga raganuga bhakti raganuga bhakti is rag and anurag that means we have spontaneous love for for krishna and we are always thinking of krishna the next stage is higher stage which is bhava bhakti we will come to it and after bhava bhakti there is prem bhakti so in bhava bhakti we are our emotional our feelings our sentiments they are all attached to krishna all the time but in prem bhakti there is intense prem and krishna and the devotee are same there is no difference between so krishna this is called ananya bhakti which krishna is described here yes mata ji atchit संजय धनंजय Arjuna's different names they were defined. Why he is called Dhananjay? Anyone? Yudhishthir Maharaj wanted to do some sacrifice. He wanted to do certain yajna, and for yajna he needed money, and money was collected by Arjuna. So that is called. That is why Krishna is called. Uh, Krishna is calling Arjuna as Dhananjaya. Oh dear Arjuna, oh winner of wealth! If you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulated principles of. So these Krishna is telling now the different stages by which you can achieve. One can achieve Krishna. Now Ananya Bhakti is not everybody is uh, is not able to do Ananya Bhakti because we are material people. We are engaged in material. We are involved in. many sense gratification activities economic development and, and other kind of uh, attachments and allurements so krishna says if you are not able to do anani bhakti you are not able to do it just follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga what are regulative principles we know that those four regulative principles chanting 40 16 rounds and following the you know different kind of other uh, disciplines like penances austerities and uh, sacrifices and yajna and also constantly thinking or serving lord krishna so these are principles of this basic principles of bhakti yoga in this way you will develop a desire to attain me so desire to attain me but that means there is a second stage you may proceed to ananya bhakti if you do these things so there uh, now what is the process basically how does in fact this desire develop the process is first there has to be faith and before faith one has to have some kind of knowledge the knowledge comes from disciplic succession or parampara when we get knowledge then we develop conviction when conviction is there we develop faith and when faith is there then only devotional service can be performed in a pure purified manner so this uh, knowledge comes from disciplic succession only and i mentioned the day before yesterday that we are from the sampradaya which is called as a brahma madhava gaudiya sampradaya all the spiritual master they have come in disciplic succession and they have transmitted the vedic knowledge or message of krishna in as they received originally as was delivered by lord krishna to the first spiritual master so and currently we have jay pataka swami maharaj as our spiritual master after uh, uh, shila rup shila uh, prabhupad he left his uh, this material body so 
Krishna says, if you can't do Anani Bhakti, just follow the regulative principles. Then you will develop a desire to achieve me. When there is a desire, you know, when, when we have a desire, we, we make efforts, we do actions. So what is those actions that Krishna is going to mention uh, now? Yes, Mataji? Abhyas AP. Krishna says that if you are not able to do anani bhakti, just fix your, if you are not able to fix your mind and intelligence to me and serve me, then what you do, you just uh, this just work for me rather that. Uh, if you are not able to follow the principles or the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, then what you do? Just try to work for me. When you desire to work, uh, you will uh, try to work for me, then you will again reach a perfection, a stage of perfection. Then when you work for me, you will develop attachment. And when there is attachment, there will be desire to develop a kind of relationship and follow the principles of regulative principles of bhakti yoga and when one follows the regulative principles of bhakti yoga he will have ananya bhakti so ultimately he can reach so you can see here that a person is just a mason he is building a, a, a pillar of a temple that that is krishna wants you what you do you just prepare cook for me you dress up me you will develop some kind of desire to, you know, to have a loving relationship with me. So, work first is Anani Bhakti, second was following the regulatory principles. If that is not possible because of certain social, political, or economic or other reasons, then just work for me. Because working for me is an individual effort. It will not affect others. So, this is Krishna adjusting again. Now, this is important words and has to be memorized. Yes, Mataji. Yet Karosi Yet Ashnashi. Yet Karosi Yet Ashnashi. Yet Divosi the Dashiya. Yet Tapasya Sikanteya. Yet Purusa Mad Arpanam. Krishna is say, saying, What you should work for me? Yet Karosi, whatever you do, do it for me. That means, whatever we are doing, let us offer our action to Krishna. Yet Ashtasi, whatever you eat, offer it to me first. We always offer everything to Lord first before consuming ourselves. Uh, even, even while drinking water, think that Krishna, please accept it. I am accepting it, uh, taking it as a prasadam only. So this is the kind of concept one has to develop all the time. And all that you offer and give away, give away. That means whatever charity we do, we should offer it in the name of Krishna. And as well as all the austerities, austerities means tap, tapas, whatever activities, tapas like past and all those things, whatever do, we should do for Krishna. Whatever sacrifice is now, we are doing all the activities should be, oblations should be in the name of Krishna only. Of course, we do it for Vishnu, but Krishna is the, Vishnu is the uh, yajna approach, but through Vishnu, Krishna is receiving all, uh, all the oblations. So it should be done as an offering to me. So this is considering the our poor status of our mentality, our mental makeup, our activities, our lethargy. Krishna has given so much of liberty. Ananya Bhakti, regulative principles, work for me. Whatever you are doing, just offer. If you can't work for me, just do whatever you are doing. Do it for me. Yes, Mataji. If I were you are unable to work in this consciousness, then try to act, giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. So in in uh, Karma Yoga, we, we, uh, you must have heard, uh, learned a word, Param Drashtva Nivartati. Does anybody know what, what, what was the meaning of this word? It was a question also in assignment. Param Dashtva Nivartate. This relates to this verse. That one should develop higher taste. 
you know, yet karosi, what are we doing? We are doing everything for ourselves, our relatives, our family members. But Krishna says yet, when you develop a taste for offering everything to me, then this is a higher taste. So param drashtuva nevartate, you should develop that thing. Whatever austerities, whatever charity, whatever food you are doing or whatever activities you are doing, just do it as an offering to me. Now Krishna says, if you are even if you are not able to do all these things, then just give up the results of your work. That means from sakam karma, you come to nishkam karma or akarma. That akarma that means activities done as an offering to Krishna without any desire to avail the or enjoy the fruits or the uh, benefits of that activity. So Krishna says that just give up the results. This is the next stage in the bhakti that Krishna and try to be self-situated. In this picture, you can see Nanda, Krishna has arrived from the Kansa's prison uh, in Nanda, and Nand Maharaj is giving away charity to all the citizens of his state. So Krishna is saying here, give up results of our, our work. He is doing out of his pleasure and giving this charity as a token of respect to Krishna. Yes, Mataji? So, let us put a question here. Uh, we are here out of our own jigyasa to learn Krishna consciousness or science of Krishna here. What basically, what we are, we have to uh, the price we are paying for the, uh, learning this Krishna consciousness. Are we paying any price? Nothing, any, Prabhu. No, we are not paying any price, isn't it, Prabhu? But no, Prabhu. the Krishna consciousness will not come without paying price. We have to pay some price. And what is that price? Srila Rupa Guruswami says in uh, Nectar of Devotion that lolium Intense greed for love for Krishna. Intense greed to know the science of Krishna. Intense need, intense greed to uh, have a darshan of Krishna, to be in the fold of Krishna. Intense greed to come out of this cycle of birth and death. That is the price one has to pay. It is not a material con concern. It is not in the form of money we are talking. It, we have to have a greed, lalach, lolyam or greed for Krishna consciousness, then we can develop in the path of, you know, uh, this. So Krishna Bhagavan, uh, Krishna is here saying, Shreyo hi jnanam abhyasaj. So if you are not able to give up the results of your action, then you want to enjoy them, then better to attain knowledge then. Then what is, this is what jnanis are doing. Jnanad dhyanam Vishishyate. Uh, and as compared to the attaining the knowledge about, because knowledge, one cannot attain knowledge in this lifetime, in one single lifetime. The earlier people used to have in Satyuga 100,000 uh, years of life. In uh, then Treta, it was 10,000 years. In, in Dwapar, it was 1,000 years. Now in Kaluga, it is 100 years. And it is going to be less day by day. So for dhyan, it, dhyan, attaining dhyan is very difficult. Jnana and dhyanam vishishyate, as compared to attaining knowledge, meditation is better. Meditating on Lord Krishna, right? So, or dhyana the karma fal tyagas, and better than uh, meditation is the renunciation of the fruits of our actions. And tyagas shramtir anantaram, anantaram. So, if you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, however, is meditation. And better than meditation is renunciation of the results of action for by which such renunciation one can attain peace of mind. So, he said that, all right, you are not able to do anand bhakti. You are not able to do regulative principle. You are not able to do nishkam karma. You are not able to, uh, you know, uh, nishkam karma. You are not able to do everything offering results to me, then you take up jnana. But then 
better than this attaining knowledge is meditation and better than attaining knowledge this uh, meditation is renunciation of fruits of one's activity at least you will be at peace of mind you will have peace of mind so these are this is the picture which is uh, representing jnana and this is ultimately the stage of meditation it is so difficult the, in this kali yuga uh, what is the best practice in kali yuga one can do what is the best form of devotional service what was it in satyuga what was in treta dwapar and kali yuga does anybody remember kali yuga chanting process sankirtan process of chanting because this is very difficult attaining jnana is limitless jnana is limitless one can't attain in satyuga it was just sacrifice yajna in treta yuga it was meditation in 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 uh, uh, dwapar yuga it was deity worship and in kali yuga it is now sankirtana only that is why chaitanya prabhu mahaprabhu appeared so then at least by chanting we can have uh, this peace of mind then krishna in 1340 says one who is not envious but who is a king kind friend to all living entities who does not think himself uh, a proprietor who is free from false ego and equal both in happiness and distress who is always satisfied and engaged in devotional service with determination and whose mind and intelligence are in agreement with me he is very dear to me now what was the first question krishna uh, arjuna asked from in the beginning of this chapter does anybody remember what was the first question prabhu ji and mata ji we have just discussed so at length and krishna is experienced so beautifully what was the first yes. question first whether the book of this chapter devotional, whether the devotional practice is better or the uh, for, uh, for praying to lord in the personal form or the impersonal form very nice thank you prabhu ji so the first question was yes. that uh, what is better what is more perfect the personal form or worship of the impersonal form so lord krishna in these verses up to 12 has explained different stages of development of bhakti yoga and which is better why ananya bhakti to to you know ultimately this knowledge gyanam and meditation and giving up the fruit of the fruit of actions that is up to the brings about the peace of mind so from ananya bhakti to peace of mind lord has given different stages uh, of bhakti so that now from 13 to 19 is going to tell 26 qualities which are make one dear to krishna we love krishna but does krishna also love us krishna is very dear to us but are we equally dear to krishna so what quality he loves these are 26 qualities which are described in verse number 13 to 19 so first he says Uh, i'll just go through these readings because they are don't don't need, don't need, need uh, much explanation one one who is kind friend uh, kind friend to all living beings the important point is that he is kind and friend to all living beings second quality does not think himself as a proprietor in second chapter we learned a detail which is a uh you know the summary of entire bhagavad gita proprietor why we are suffering because we are we consider ourselves as proprietor or the master of or owner of this entire universe we consider us that we, this house is mine this this garden is mine this car is mine this house this job is mine this city is mine so this false sense of ownership this is nirmama does not think himself to be proprietor proprietor is only one he is krishna we are just ser servitors we are servants who is free from false ego third what is false ego false ego means that we identify ourselves with our designation with our bodily features with our complexion with our position in office with our wealth our possessions this is false ego we are not body we are not i am if i say i am this thing i i am i am name only But the my real identity is the so the soul that I am part and parcel of God. So this is false ego. Equal both in happiness and distress. Some dukkha, especially two point in verse uh, chapter number two. 
Krishna says in verse number 14 that uh, the sensation of heat and cold, sensation of distress uh, and the happiness, they are they are just matter of senses only. They are perception of senses. So he says here, equal both in happiness and distress. Here again, same thing is emphasized. And who is always satisfied, santushed, and engaged in devotional service with determination, and whose mind and intelligence are in agreement with me. He is very dear to me. So these are the qualities of devotee which Krishna appreciates. In the next verse, he again says, he, for whom no one is put into difficulty. That means he does not cause any distress to anybody else and who also is not distressed by anybody because of anxiety, who is steady in happiness and distress is very dear to me. Then Krishna says, one who is not envious is a grand, this one we have already discussed in 12, 13, 14. So in verse 16, he says, a devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities. In fact, all of us are dependent on different kinds of activities. We do not think that activities are just, we are just agents. All activities are being done by three modes of material nature. We are not doing doer. Doer is Krishna basically. But we are, we are not the doer. We are under influence of three modes of material activities and three modes of material nature. And that is why we are acting in a particular manner. A Brahmana or a Kshatriya or a Shudra or maybe a businessman or a doctor or a office goer clerk. All these people, they are bound their mode of, they have certain behavior, pattern, conduct and character that is determined by their three modes of material nature. Who is pure, expert, uh, without cares, free from all pains, and who does not strive for some result is very dear to me. So these are the qualities of devotee Krishna is describing uh, in these verses. Then further he says, one who neither grasps pleasure or grief, that is some duk, some uh, duk sukha, and who neither laments nor desires, and who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things is very dear to me. Now, what is auspicious and inauspicious? It is a, it is a concept of mind, basically. Everything is auspicious because it has been created by Lord himself. So nothing could be inauspicious which he creates. So this is our perception. So he is take, the other meaning is that we have to purify our senses in order to receive happiness and sorrow in order to receive auspiciousness, in order inauspiciousness as equal or similar uh, at the same uh, platform. So in 18 to 19, Krishna says, one who is equal to friends and enemies, who is equiposed in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy, who is always free from contamination, you know, we are our soul gets contaminated by contamin coming in contact with three modes of material nature. So that it is masked, and that these three modes of material nature dictate our soul, our intelligence, and our mind, and thereby we act through our senses. So one has to be free from this contamination, always silent and satisfied with anything. Sada Santusht, who does not care for any residence who is fixed in knowledge and engaged in devotional service is very dear to me. What is what is fixed in knowledge? Fixed in knowledge that I am I am eternal servitor of Krishna. I am Dasa Nudas. I am not the master. I am not Nirmama. That is not, nothing belongs to me. Everything belongs to Krishna. He has allotted certain share to me. This is given in Nectar of Instructions that Lord has allotted do birds and aunts and all these. They do not go to office to earn any money. They Because God has assured the, the, their protection, their sustenance, and he provides for everything. So one who, who always rests his entire energy and faith and trust in Krishna and depends on him, he is dear to Krishna. So in 12.2 in this picture, I need to explain it then very quickly. Can anybody tell what is happening in this picture? And this was 
this is a symbolic Prahlad Maharaj. He was tortured. He was even crushed by uh, the elephant and he was even uh, tortured by these uh, demons. But he remained calm and quiet. You see, he denounces both auspicious and is dear to me. Th these are some of the pictures which are representing these uh, qualities of uh, devotee. And does anybody know the, what is happening here? Hare Krishna Prabhuji Mataji, very quickly. You know, this is Amrish Maharaj. And this is Durvasa Muni. Now, can anybody recall what, what was happening here? Okay, I'll tell you briefly this story. It is a long story. In fact, Amrish Maharaj was uh, is a perfect all Navada Bhakti, that is nine forms of devotion. He represents nine forms of devotional service. That is uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, uh, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Adi, and uh, the, uh, those nine stages of devotional service. He represents all those devotions because he, being a king, he was a very elevated soul and being a king, he was doing all kinds of devotional service, cleaning the temple, washing, washing the utensils, cooking for food for Lord Krishna, uh, all kind of, uh, always thinking of Krishna, always praying him, always chanting his name. So that is the, it was the day of Dwadashi and he was supposed to break the fast of Ekadashi on Dwadashi. You know that Ekadashi fast is broken within a certain fixed period of time. Otherwise, the results of this fast are not accrued, accrued upon. So it was Dwadashi and the time for, for breaking fast had just come. And at that very moment, Durvasa Muni along with his 50,000 disciples arrives and they say, uh, now, when guest comes, we know we as a tradition we have to serve him uh, food before we can partake anything. So that the Rasa Muni was very envious of Amrish Maharaj because he was chanting all the time. While Durvasa Muni was a Brahmin, he thought how this uh, king could be such a big devotee of uh, Krishna. So. Out of envy, he came to test Ramrish Maharaj and he told that, look, uh, we have come with uh, our entourage, we have 50,000 uh, devoted disciples and I have come. And so naturally, uh, the Amrish Maharaj has to welcome the king, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the Rasamani, and feed them. But the Rasamani at that moment, he knew that, that it is time for uh, Amrish Maharaj to break his fast. So what he says, that, he says, look, wait, uh, I'm going to take bath before I take and in the meanwhile you prepare food for us. Now he goes for a bath all the 50,000 disciples along with Prishwara Vasamini and the time passes on, keeps on going, going, going but this, this Vasamini is not arriving. Now he is, the time for breaking fast is also coming to end. So he consults his ministers what to do. He says that King, you have fasted, not taken even a drop of water on Ekadashi day fast. So please, you can take one drop of water because water is not a green. Ekadashi on Ekadashi fast, we do not consume any kind of green. So uh, Durvasa Muni uh, is not coming. So what he does on the advice of minister, uh, this Amrish Maharaj takes a drop of water and by mystic powers, the, the, the Rasa Muni comes to know that uh, before feeding me, Amrish Maharaj has consumed a drop of water. So he becomes, he comes immediately, appears immediately along with the disciples and curses. He pulls out a, a, a strand of hair from his, his head and he creates this demon and asks the demon to kill uh, Amrish Maharaj. But Amrish Maharaj is a pure devotee of Krishna. Krishna sends, he always, he is very kind to his uh, devotees. So in order to protect his pure devotee, Krishna sends his Sudarshan Chakra to kill Durvasa Muni. Seeing the Durvasa Muni that Sudarshan Chakra is coming to kill him, he runs away from this palace and he goes to Brahmaji. First he goes to Lord Shiva. He says, save me. Shiva says that, oh, this is Sudarshan Chakra of Krishna. I can't, this is out of my domain. I can't touch him, I can't stop it. So then he rushes to Lord Brahma. Then Lord Brahma also says the same thing, that, oh, this is Krishna's Sudarshan Chakra. It is beyond my jurisdiction, beyond my power to stop it. So then he rushes to Vishnu. Lord Vishnu says, yes, 
it can be stopped under one condition, that you had offended a pure devotee of Lord Krishna, Amrish Maharaj, and you have uh, misbehaved with him. Go and seek his forgiveness. If you, he forgives you, then only then only this Sudarshan chapter can be uh, called back or recalled back. So this is the power of pure devotee of Krishna. Now, so Durasamani is saving his life. He runs back to Amrish Maharaj again. He says, please save me. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry and all kind of pardon he seeks. And ultimately, Durvasa, Amrish Maharaj in the first place would have, uh, you know, uh, counteracted this curse. But he's a pure devotee. He doesn't counteract anything. He accepts everything, the pure devotee. So that is why he accepted and ultimately he forgave Durasamani. And this is how this he was saved. Otherwise, his life would have been finished. So this is how a devotee is. These are the qualities of, of, of a pure devotee which are dear to Krishna. This is what Krishna has said. Now, in the last, this is perhaps the last sloka, he who follows this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engages himself with faith, making me the supreme goal, is very, very dear to me. So far he has been saying, dear to me, dear to me, dear to me. Now he says, in the end, follows this imperishable path of devotional service. That means the a devotee who acquires these 26 qualities does transcendental loving devotional service to the personal form of Krishna, he is very, very dear, very, very dear to him. And this picture you can see, this is another beautiful story. Does anybody know or can tell what is happening here in this picture? Andy Prabhuji or Mataji? Janti Mataji, Neha Mataji, Janesh Prabhu. No? Any idea? Can you name the persons who are seen in this picture? Supreme Lord and uh... Bilba Mangal. Bilba Mangal Thakur. Bilba Mangal is a, this, this initially uh -huh. Yes, Mataji? Do you remember the story? Bilba Magal Thakur story. You can unmute if you would want to say something. Bilba Mangal was a Brahmin. He was a pious Brahmin. But by accident, he became attached to a prostitute. He threw out his parents, wife, everybody. And he was so attached to his uh, this prostitute who was very beautiful that uh, he will. Uh, he forgot about uh, chanting and uh, doing uh, Krishna, his Krishna consciousness. Then one time, what happened? He uh, it was in uh, night, very stormy night, and the this Bilva Mangal just had just completed the shraddh ceremony of his father, and he was so attached to see this uh, lady uh, who was very beautiful prostitute that he used to visit her daily. But this night was very stormy, and the all there was so much flood, water everywhere, everywhere, lightning, and uh, it was so scary. But because of his attachment to this lady, what he did after finishing the shah ceremony of uh, his uh, father, he swam, catch caught hold of uh, a dead body, taking it to be a boat, and over the dead body which was floating, he crossed this storming, stormy night, the river, and he reaches this. Uh, this prostitute's house. The prostitute waited for some time and then she closed her, put off the lamp and closed the doors, thinking that he's not coming now. So then there is a knock at the door. Bilba Mangur, no, Mangal, uh, uh, he, rather, that was in the courtyard, there, are, there was a knock at the door. That she opens the door and sees he, uh, she finds that Vilma Mangal is standing in such a horrible night, in such a stormy night, it all rains, so much of lightning, flood everywhere. So she, she asks, how did you come? That he explains that I, 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 I float uh, over a you know dead body. Then uh, since your door was locked, I caught hold of a rope. Uh, which was, in fact, as you matter of fact, uh, uh, which I mistook uh, as a rope. It was a serpent, a snake, and then I dropped down, uh, scaled your wall, and came into your house. And that is now this lady, 
acted very wisely. She said, look, you are, you have done all these efforts in such a, uh, adverse conditions for this uh, body made of flesh and bones. Had you done this much of effort for Krishna, probably your life would have been uh, salvaged. You would have been liberated. And this lady, though she was prostituted, she was very intelligent. She acted as a spiritual master for Vilva Mangal. So that very moment, he leaves everything and he proceeds to go to Vrindavana to, and, uh, to uh, render devotional service to Krishna. So when he reaches Vrindavana, again, you know, what happens when you switch off fan, does it stop immediately or it takes some time? To stop completely, what happens? It takes some time. It takes some time. So the bad tendency is similarly they do not stop immediately. Now he was so attached to this lady. Now when he reaches Brindavan, what happens? That uh, he finds a Brahmana couple, a beautiful lady uh, uh, going ahead of him. So he is again thinking of that lady, that beauty of that lady, he wants to possess her and see so many kinds of things, so bad ideas start coming in his mind, though he had come for a noble cause to Vrindavana. So what happens that they, the couple reaches home, they close the door, husband closes the door and, and again that this Bilva Mangal, he knocks at the door and he asks that the, 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 the lady was just and the people were pious Brahmana couple, so he asked you look like a saint, Prabhuji. What service we can do for you? You seem to be visiting Vrindavana. The, then he, Vilma Mangal uh, says that I want to meet the lady of the house. Please call her. She was a chaste lady. She said, why should I go there? Then husband asked, no, he's a saintly person. He has called you. He wants to look, have, have a word with you. So please come out. So this lady comes out. Vilma Mangal now he was he's no longer Thakur at that time. He asked the lady, do you have a hairpin in your uh, hairs? The lady says yes. And he she takes out the hairpin. And what he does, he makes him, he pierces both his eyes with that hairpin and makes himself blind. So they are astonished. This couple is astonished. What have you done, the saint? You are seeing such a... He said, then he narrates that... When I came with a noble purpose to Vrindavana, but again my mind eluded me and I lost my balance. So I don't want to see anything in this world now henceforth. I just want to see with my blind eyes Krishna's figure only and sing his glory all the time. So this is, then he, you can see, then he became Bilba, Bilba Mangal Thakur thereafter. And even Lord Krishna, when he used to sing, Glories of Krishna, Bhajans, Kirtan, Namismaran, Namasankirtana, then Krishna himself used to come to listen to Bilva Mangal Thakur. So this is a beautiful instance how a pure devotee conduct should be that he is one pointed. He blinded himself just to see nothing in the world except Krishna in his mind. So this kind of worship Bilva Mangal Thakur used to give and Krishna says such a devotee is very, very dear to me. So here we come to end of this uh, chapter. Uh, it is already, in fact, 10, eight, uh, 10 or 15 minutes past 8 o'clock. So we can have some very quick questions if there is any or any doubts. So uh, Prabhuji and Mataji, please, if there is any doubt or if you'd like to ask me anything or any clarification, or tomorrow onwards, uh, uh, Chitra Subramanian Swami Mataji, Subramanian Mataji will be taking uh, up your classes. It is my blessing. Uh, it is a blessing for me that she gave me an opportunity to talk to you and to discuss some of the beautiful passages from Bhakti Yoga chapter number 10, 11, 12, the, uh, the uh, most confidential knowledge, the opulences of the absolute, and now that then this uh, universal form in the last one, which is the essence of entire Bhagavad Gita. Chapter number 9, chapter number 12, they are such beautiful chapters that one must remember, memorize most of the shlokas. Any doubts or anything? I would just like to say that, uh, to summarize, personal form of Krishna is very good. If one cannot 
do ananya bhakti, then ultimately he can attain peace of mind. So he has given different stages. Six stages are given by which nishkam karmi yoga, kar, kaam kar, sakam karmi yoga, jnan yoga, karmi yoga, in renunciation of the fruits of the activities, and ultimately Krishna from 13 to 19, Krishna tells what are the qualities which make him uh, make a dear, make a devotee dear to him. So this is what he has mentioned. These are 26 qualities given in from 13 to 19, and are in the last Krishna says in the verse 20 that one who follows this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engages himself with faith as Maharaj Amrish used to do, making me the supreme goal is very very dear to me. So. So we have to follow uh, the footsteps of these pure devotees and of course Shraddha. So Bhakti has got, how does Bhakti develop? First of all, we have to have faith, Shraddha. And after Shraddha, association of devotees, that is Sadhu Sangha. When there is Sadhu Sangha, Sangha then there is uh, Sankirtana. And after Sankirtana, there is Anarth Nibrati, all the, all the uh, you know, Vices they go away. When there is anarth nibrati, there is uh, you know nishta, ruchi, and asakti, and thereafter bhav bhakti and prem bhakti. This is the this is the flow. So first of all, we have to have shraddha, and with the, before shraddha, we have to serve pure devotional. Uh, we have to have mercy, seek the mercy of pure devotion, pure devotee, and also serve pure devotee, and. We are fortunate in Krishna consciousness that we have got all these facilities available here. We have pure Vaishnavas, pure devotees, pure spiritual masters who are coming from disciplic succession that we can follow this path made so easy by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Mataji. If there is, and is there any question or doubt or addition or correction or contribution, you are welcome. The admin has posted, you know, at attendance link. So please fill in the attendance before you leave. So if there is nothing, then I can close today's chapter. So with closing prayer. Pancha kalp tarubhyasya krapa sindhuva evucha patita nam pavne pyo kashna pyo namo namaha ananti kod vashna vandh ki jaya shila prabhupad ki jaya. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srimad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, sabhi bhakt prandho ki jai. Hare Krishna Prabhuji and then what pram to Prabhuji and Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much for such insightful sessions Prabhuji. We really love your association for these three days. Thank you oh, Prabhuji for giving thank us. You, thank you Mataji. It is all Krishna's grace. I am just a medium. I, I know very little. I don't know almost. I know nothing almost, I should say. I am just learning everything. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your association. We look forward for further more. Sure, sure. Please continue your journey in Krishna consciousness. After you finish level one, please join second. Please. This is my prayer to all of you because we have we must spare at least one hour, two hour uh, yeah. for Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Thank you very much for participating in Hare Krishna.